Hey everyone, it's a lovely afternoon here on the river and I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to grab my dry fly set up, jump into the water behind me and this pool to start with and uh, essentially just fish up blind and talk, roll the camera and talk you through my thought process and how I'm fishing the dry, what I'm fishing and why and uh, hopefully catch a few fish along the way. So um, yeah, come with, hope you enjoy it. So let's go. All right, so I'll briefly explain what I'm uh, uh, what I'm going to be fishing with as I just kind of have a little bit of a look at this pool before I, I jump in. Um, I've got a 9 foot 4 weight rod, I've got a 12 foot um, base for my dry fly leader and then I've got a tipper ring and I've extended the tippet out. I think I'm about 16 feet at the moment but depending on the wind and other stuff we'll probably change as we go up. Um, what I typically like to do is have the same base leader and then work off that but that's one for a, uh, another video probably. Um, tippet wise 7x um, and then I've got on a little uh, size 14 CDC dry fly there. It's kind of like a half mayfly, half caddis, this one. And then I've also prepped down here some uh, other dries on my patch that I'll potentially fish. Tabernas there, an F fly if there's a really tough fish in a pool like this. Um, black spinner if there are some leaping out of the water. And a plume tip if there's also, you know, some um, tough fish uh, on small mayfly or midge or something like that. But in the water we've got here, I think we'll be fine just ticking along with a nice generalist searching pattern, which is why I like the uh, a CDC Sedge or a CDC Mayfly. Size 14 is a really nice all-round size, and you can kind of go up or down from there. So let's jump in here. Let's see, I'm expecting to have one rise in front of me in through some of this stuff here, but it hasn't happened as of yet. But one may ascend when I do present a fly in the direction. Stick that on the water. My biggest obstacle today is probably gonna be these overhanging tree ferns because they do an amazing job of grabbing any sort of leader or straight tivet or anything because there's so many like prongs there. All right, I'm just gonna rule out. We start fish down into the back half of this before I start moving up just because I don't want to walk over the top of an easy one that'll just eat at the moment the fly kind of lands. One of the best lessons I ever got taught was it doesn't matter how you get a fly there if you get it there's a fish. Oh. oh that's oh he's around that stick he's out get up 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 Thank you, mate. The, I was going to say, the lesson I got taught was sometimes if it's a hard place to cast, all you need to do is get your fly there. And there's some days there's always a nice aggressive one that'll just do the rest for you. So step one's getting the fly there. And if there's one that really wants it, you'll catch him no matter how you get it there. That's a nice fish to start with. Come here, matey. That's a beautiful fish. Barbs hooks are so good. Oh, he's hooked by the tiniest amount of skin there. That's why you don't want to pull too hard and you do want like a nice rod that has a bit of give so you don't pull the hooks on, on fish. Cause it's amazing how like a little barber's hook like that can catch the tiniest amount of skin or something and stick a fish for you. All right. I apologize about this next bit because I'm going to have to be drying my dry if it gets particularly gooped up from fish. But I'm always, uh, I always want to do it. I always want to fish a CDC dry if I can because the hookup and the conversion rate is so good. Like that fish ate downstream around the corner from me and we still got a lovely hook set. All right. Just dried it off with some amadou there. Probably doesn't even need it. I'll give it a little bit of dry shake. And my dry is ready to go. Should point out, in these downtimes, jump down into the description below this video, because you'll find there are links to uh, all the gear that I'm using. Um, there are links to where you can buy the flies. There are links to all your SA and all the stockists here in Australia, so jump down, have a look there. And we're good to go again. 
I just hope that fish on this log didn't create too much abrasion on my leader and tippet here. I think I'm good. But yeah, if there's anything that fish can teach us, it's step one, just get a fly there. It doesn't matter if the drift only lasts for one second before it drags. Sometimes one second's all you need. The fly lands and the fish can launch up and eat it. Throw another one down beneath us there. Can't really read the water very well there just because it's in a bit of a shade pocket. So that fly was just drifting back down in that slow bubble line there. And that fish came up and ate it really nicely. I'm definitely going to hook blackberries and tree ferns on the far side. Drifts are quite awkward going across this slow current, so I'm just um, not letting the fly drift for too long. I'm just trying to get a nice, concise, short drift, make it land. If a fish is there, he'll have the time to come up and eat it, and I'm just picking it up before I uh, present to the next spot. In this slow water, so often, the fly lands and the fish just moves and eats it. And if he hasn't, you know, the fish hasn't moved to it within, I don't know, however many seconds, would take them to come up you know 10 seconds or so i'm pretty happy you know picking the drive and recasting and representing it you'll find like cdc drives like this pick up so nicely oh that's god's that stick they pick up so beautifully off the water so you're not going to spook a fish by picking up to recast there. There's going to be one in that current. Gonna get a lot of that where I try to lift my line off the water and my leader will have been caught in the rocks or something. Hey, there's our first tree fern. Probably should have seen that guy. I do find when I get stuck in like sticks like that, the best way is just to kind of break them up and then you'll find that'll fall away and your fly comes free. All right, let's go into the fun stuff, the fun pocket water. So essentially as I'm moving up through this stuff, depth is going to be my friend. Probably and because the light is it's very bright right now, um, light uh, sorry, shaded water or depth is going to be really essential. So like little pockets like that one up there is nice. You know, there may be a fish really shallow in this stuff, but very hard to read the depth. If in doubt, I'm just going to try and put a fly roughly everywhere within reason because it doesn't take long for a fish to shoot out from under the rocks and up and eat the fly. I'm going to have a bit of trouble with my leader hooking on sticks but you can't do much about that that's part of the game we play that's a lovely depression there wherever i can i'm going to be trying to get my line up off the water over these rocks
Oh, there's one started to move to that. He slid out from that rock. Let's see if he'll come up again. It went over the rock. Oh, he heard it land. That was a bad drift. I think I need to get it over to that side there. Oh, getting some horrible drag. He heard that. He popped out. That should be good. Oh. He looked at that again. This has not been my best display. I wonder if I can just open up my angle here. I reckon he wants to eat it. Ah, oh, he looked at that again. Problem is, see if he'll eat it animated. He sees it quite late and then comes up and I'm just catching the tiniest bit of drag as I come over that rock. And if I had a nymph on, he would be quite easy to catch, I would say. Hmm, I might have to leave him as much as that's going to pain me. That's a shame. Such a shame. Good to know they're in that depth pocket though. That is really good to know. Got him. Oh. That was so interesting. The most bizarre thing ever happened then. If I can get this fish out, that is crazy. That's almost an accidental fish. What happened was, I flicked a cast in here just because it got a little bit drowned on a rock over the other side there. So my fly was sitting lower in the water, which meant that I was able to keep my, when I cast back into this pocket, I'll make sure this fish has some water there. When I cast into this pocket, the stick of the fly, because it was sitting lower, allowed me to lift more line off the water, which stopped the drag, which gave that fish time to come out and eat it. That was the most bizarre and accidentally amazing drift ever. Lovely, healthy, healthy brown trout. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> that was super cool. Very, very cool. But it's amazing, it doesn't take much water to hold them if they have cover. All right. Nice way to start. All right. We'll keep working up through some of this stuff. Hoping that you can see a fish rise or something like that in some of the depth we've got coming up.
I'd like to not have to go through the process of repeatedly peppering a fish like that. It'd be nice if they just ate it first cast in the new spot. Oh, that's a lovely spot. At times you're just going to have to compromise in this sort of water and have your line, there was a fish that rose up over the other side there. You're going to have to compromise on your drift and just lay the line over rocks or fast water and just get a short drift. And I'm going to have that problem with this fish here. He just rose beside my fly and he came looking for it. Don't tell me he just spooked. Ah, oh, there he is. Got him. <laughs> that was amazing. That was very cool. Another very healthy brown. Goes to show you though, if you know where you where you want to make the drift, if you know uh, the spot the fish is in or where you anticipate the fish, drag's not as much of a problem because you just go for a short drift. He's woofed that fly. That's so good, barbless hooks just fall out like that. Thank you, mate. Yeah, if you know where the fish is, then you can just go for a very short controlled drift it makes it a lot easier all right You can probably see why I love CDC dries so much. Even if I have to, you know, faff around a little bit by getting the dry right so it fishes well again, the conversion rate, when one does eat it like that, I just have such confidence that they're gonna stick because there's like nothing other than the hook. There's like no big bulky hackles around the fly, nothing like that. Oh my gosh, as I'm drying this fly, a fish has just slid into my vision and the tail out of this run above. I'm just gonna sneak very carefully here. Get this line out. I don't wanna spook him with a big false cast or anything. I've got no trees behind me. Where is he? There he is. All right, let's see if he eats this. Got him. Oh. <laughs> How crazy is this? This fishing is amazing. <laughs> he weirdly like nose the fly before he actually ate that. Oh, thank you, mate. What a beautiful fish. Hello. They're such stunning flies on the other side. Such stunning brown trout. Such a good fly. Thank you, mate. That's weird, he came up like, booked it, <laughs> waited, and then ate it. And we started right here. It's amazing what happens when you fish slowly, take the time, when you're in good water, and you just take it slowly, fish just kind of appear.
right. Such a consistently good fly. CDC caddis, CDC mayfly, anything like that in a size 14 is just a great searching fly. As you see, they eat it so confidently in this flatter stuff there too. And if that fish like came up refused, that's when I would go to like a plume tip or an F fly. Oop, that was smart. Yeah. Drop my desk in the water. <laughs> All right. feel like I caused a bit of, com of a commotion here, so I don't know how good this little bit will be here. Just make sure that dry is riding right. nice when you get a straight current like that you just position all your line in the same current and you alleviate drag it's one of the few times where you can present a fly in a straight line and not need to throw that much slack around Lovely little pocket. Nice little channel up over there. Right over the back. Got him. Oh, he just came off. <gasps> no. Oh, he's still there. Oh, now he's spooking. Ah, such a sneaky, good little spot over there. No. Damn, that was a shame. I was almost like, I felt like I was getting ready to pick up, so I'd gathered the slack, and then when he ate it, I was almost a bit tight to him, like he didn't get the chance to properly inhale it. Let's throw another drift back up in there. Don't think he's gonna eat, or there's another there. That cloud's nice, it helps me read this water a little bit more easily. Come on, I'd expect one <laughs> to pop out from that little undercut there. 
and they've got a bit close. Definitely going to be fishing that bit above. Going to rule out this nice stuff through here. That's a nice hole. It's got like a slack pocket. Right there in the middle. a nice spot for one. Get out of there. Sometimes like a little bit of animation in front of the rocks like that can kind of tease them out to it. That was a nice grip, a nice pocket. That was like my best drift of the day and it went unrewarded. All right. Just want to make sure I get into a nice body position and get up high-ish so I can get a good visual on this piece above me here. Nothing worse than like walking straight up and then just looking down and the fish is like right there and you're kind of on top of him. Let's take a moment to kind of Pose, see if one rises, always makes it easier. We should fly in this pocket here while I'm here. fishing short through the back half. There's so often fish that will like kind of sit in the lip just before it tumbles over. If you cast too long, you're just gonna get a drift that will drag by the time it gets to that fish. The fish in those spots are often pretty eager to eat. They're pretty, you know, obliging. Through that cast a little long, so I probably got away with it. Fishing through this all nice and carefully because I feel like if I fish this all consistently well, a chance will come. It's just which piece so i kind of just need to do it all there he is like that do it all very consistently and just take my time Come here, buddy. no don't swim through that 
thing here. Another. God, they're all such nice fish. Look at the markings on him. It's got a bit of a worn tail. But the white there, the dry in the mouth. Pop that out. Nice fish. And that's just the classic example of, you know, fishing through a piece consistently well, like not rushing. Like that's obviously some of the best water because it's got the most depth and it's the main current, the bubble line. But you want to just take the time to work through this stuff and then you'll get there. And the fish isn't going to go anywhere. He'll still be there waiting for you when you eventually present the fly there. into a better position. I think I'll fish up. What I'll do is I'll probably fish up to that log across there. It's like a nice, maybe 80, 100 meters of water. But I think once I come through there, with the light the way it is, it'll just be like so bright. It probably won't, uh, probably won't be able to see anything on the camera anyway. Working, there's still a chance there'll be one further up through here. A lot of the fish, they seem to be you know, happy to be out and about at the moment. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to work up. Oh, it's a bad cast. From here, fish this little piece first wind's taken that and then I'll go back over to that other side where I caught that last fish just rest that little piece a little bit very very tight current there I need to get the fly That's nice. It's got, when a spot like that has depth, you kind of need a certain length drift to give a fish time to properly come up to eat if there's going to be one there. In the shallow water, you can kind of slap it down. He's going to eat it or he's going to not probably. But in that deep water, you need to give them time to come up. It's a nice drift. All right. Back across into the deep stuff here. straighter than I would have liked. Fly's getting stuck on the, the rock there. Oh, that's a lovely spot for a fish to be sitting facing that way to come up and eat. Alright, time to push on. I'm in the point of being irrational because the water looks so good. 
and I can't believe I haven't caught one there. And my line is going into a spider's web. Now it's landed on the water. All right. Push up. Got a couple of quick ones in here. Can't see what it looks like, but you know, you never know. Same with that pocket there. Oh, as I fall in. Oh, that was bad. I tangled that as I had a uh, handful of line. What have we done? It's bound to happen at some point. It's the only downside of some knots and like a tipper ring on your leader and stuff is it gives a point where it can catch. I'm just gonna retie this a little bit here. do myself any favors then by having my fly dragging in the current beneath me. fish or a stick with its tail over the back of that bedrock. The back in action anyway. I'll flick one straight on its head. This is going to be a very awkward piece to fish because the tail outs, like these two funnels, are just going to want to suck my leader straight to them. No, it's not a fish, it's a stick. It's going to be an interesting exercise. It's annoying because it's the ideal spot for a fish because it's where all of that, every piece of food in these two runs are going to be kind of funneling in there. And I might do fish this little bit first. I should say, I should cook this moss on the rock first and then fish here and then I can fish across at it which will give me a bit more of an angle to lay my slack somewhere through there. I have no idea, this could be like toe deep water, but still worth putting a fly in. I'll just leave my fly in there. Kind of trying to use this fast bubbly water here and these rocks as a bit of a break. Like they can, I can put them between the fish and myself. 
so I can try and get closer and alleviate the drag. Such a nice spot. Strange piece of water. It doesn't have, now I can see it. It doesn't have any depth really other than that middle pocket. It's more of like a rubbly, rubbly run. It's annoying, those sticks are blocking a lovely bit of water behind there. I'm going to get my line up out of that faster current. I can't not throw one there. It's so nice over the other side of those sticks. All right. piece of water this. Ah, oh, that's such a nice spot for a fish too. I'm going to attack the top bit of that from the other side. In the meantime, I'll throw some casts up into this. That was a terrible drift. That's better. Got him. He was there off the side. That's a nice fish. It's a very nice fish. It would be so easy. I nearly completely left that fish because I was so fixated on that beautiful deep water there. Meanwhile, there's this nice soft bit here. Lovely little CDC muncher. Thank you, buddy. That was a lovely take. That was so good. All right. Our final piece here, which looks like a bit of a sticky nightmare, but we'll do the best we can. Just using this time while I'm treating my dry to just watch all of this kind of stuff because it's amazing how often taking the time to unhook the fish, dry your fly, one pops up and you see him and you go, hey, there's one for me to catch. Whereas sometimes if you like do it frantically and you just keep powering up, you kind of leave them behind.
I haven't seen one pop up in there, which surprises me. Is that light's harsh up above here? All right, same process as at the bottom. Start low down, we're gonna work our way up. Like, if there is a fish up there for us, it'll be there later. We don't need to race there now. We can take the time, make the presentations in the back half. A nice bubble line there. Oh, is that fish that had a look? Almost looked like it was either a leaf or a fish kind of wafted down near it. Come on, that's such a good piece of water. I just can't believe there's not a fish there. All right, we'll keep ticking up. Hopefully we can encourage one up out of one of these sticky holes in the top corner and finish on a high. Oh no, it's in the spider's web. It's okay, it's just animating the dry for me holding it up and <laughs> now it's down <laughs> it's amazing how often that happens on light tippet like you cast through a spider web and it just goes go on that's the spot that is the spot it's nice I've got slack water on the left there where I can lay my leader so it's not getting any drag whereas if my leader was over here it would be getting pulled down by that current Amazing. One more little pocket up in there. Oh, bit far. Like a half pocket halfway over there there. Again, if it's a hard cast, just do your best. Get the fly to land in the area, because sometimes one will just rock it up and eat it. That's in the spider's web. All right. Last chance in this piece above. All righty. Well, there we go. I hope you enjoyed, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me fish up this piece of water behind me. We started down there at the bottom of the pockets, fished up through here, left the same dry on there, worked our way up and caught some nice fish. So that was really fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed kind of my talk through, seeing where I was putting the fly, why I was putting it, and then just kind of saw how I moved my body around the river to try and open up uh, the drifts and, and get the best like view and the best opportunities to sight fish at fish uh, with the body positioning. So yeah, 
don't forget, uh, there are links in the description. You can find out more about the gear I'm using there. I was using a 9 foot 4 weight Orvis Recon. Um, got my essay line. I'm not sure which. It's a trout of some sort. Um, it's in the description below. You can find all that there. Likewise, there's links to my fly range. Um, you can have a look at all of that stuff there. You can purchase the dryer I used today. Um, the other stuff I showed you at the start. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. And I'll... Uh, oh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, and I'll see you next one. Thanks, guys.